This case, I mean, that's just clear, clear sign of engineering. I mean, the interface between those things is, is like exact, down to the atom. It's clearly the result of an industrial process. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Avi Loeb, theoretical physicist and astronomer. I approve of the Sal Foundation and Gary Nolan's UAP research, which I am a contributor. Hope you don't mind that quirky little puppet that I uh, started out with. That's supposed to be Avi Loeb. It looks a little bit like him. Right up there is Gary Nolan, and he is taking on a task to find out the truth about UAPs. He's a professor at Stanford in the Pathology Department. This lecture is from the Sal Foundation, and it's about UAPs that supposedly crashed or left materials, and he has collected some of the materials from some of the people that found them, and he's analyzing it using a mass spectrometer, kind of a fancy device, and he's going to talk about what he found, and he's talking about the incidents in different parts of the world. As you all know, I've been interested in alleged UAP materials. So how would you analyze materials from a UAP? Well, like I said before, it's you take it apart piece by piece, you try to understand the components, and you try to ask the question, why is this component here next to that component, and what might they be doing with each other? How do we analyze it? Using the tools we already have, and I happen to have uh, laboratory tools that allow me to look at metals. Um, I'm not a metallurgist, but I play one on TV. Um, but it's, uh, I had the tools, and I had the interest, and I had a good friend by the name of Jacques Vallée. And this was a very famous sighting in 1964. The police officer saw the craft land, saw the four-foot-tall inhabitants in front of the craft and saw it take off and somehow uh, it left materials and the researcher Jacques Vallée gave Gary Nolan the materials to study. That's what Gary is analyzing, that material that that was left when the ship, this craft took off. So this could be a very credible analysis. Here's another case, very famous case, Socorro. Again, this is something from, from Jacques. Uh, on an Indian reservation, the uh, police officer was, in, was an Indian, was Indian. Um, he's driving along, uh, he hears a noise, he sees something, a shiny object in a field. He observes little people outside of the object. The object takes off kind of with a burst of flame. Um, you know, and of course, when people tried to debunk it, he's, they said he, he saw the star something or other. You know, he's a, he's a trained observer. He's a policeman, right? He didn't want to talk about it, so he wasn't seeking publicity. He just did it. So, I, so Jacques had a piece. He gave it to me. Um, and, you know, again, we take an electron microscopy. Everything looks like it's, you know, from another planet. Uh, under, uh, under an electron microscope. Um, very simple, aluminum, zinc, mostly, and some contaminants. But the aluminum and the zinc are in different places. So this is at a, a, a distance, so there it is. So there's the aluminum on the top, there's the zinc on the bottom, or vice versa. No, zinc is, zinc's the green, yes. But it's, it's differently distributed. It's the contaminants that are interesting. That's what I'm interested in, because they're kind of a signature. Is, is, are they uniformly distributed throughout the thing, meaning, or, or are they somehow next to each other? So we looked at that. So now, if I look in the aluminum on the top, again, it's incredibly pure. It has like a single oxygen molecule amidst a million. I don't know who does that and why would you do it? It's attached to a zinc thing underneath, which has some aluminum in it, but look at how it's non-uniformly distributed. Right, there's like a cluster of it over here. Is that because they have a junky 
recipe. We didn't mix it right. It just is. But why? Don't know. Again, this case, I mean, this is clear, clear sign of engineering. I mean, the interface between those things is, is like exact, down to the atom. It's clearly the result of an industrial process. The amazing part of the Socorro, New Mexico UAP landing was that the metal that they analyzed, that Gary analyzed, was manufactured. It wasn't naturally occurring. And you can see in this picture, the aluminum, uh, when I talked to a friend of mine who's a metallurgist, and he says, aluminum, to be pure, takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of heat, and a lot of manufacturing. And, and you can see the difference between the aluminum, which is blue, and the zinc, which is green. And it's definitely a manufactured part that may have been manufactured by aliens in that Tic Tac craft that landed and took off. That's one of many lectures that the Sal Foundation has been presenting to people interested in learning about UAP and how to analyze the data, get information so we can prove or disprove that there are UAPs, flying saucers. By the way, these videos that you're seeing while I'm speaking, they're a reenactment of the Socorro, New Mexico landing. I created them in Midjourney AI, the graphics program, and used a program called Pika to animate them. Each one of those images are animated for three seconds. It's pretty cool. Anyhow, hope you like them.